Ink Ribbon. After my video on the RPD, it should be no surprise that this was next. The Spencer Mansion is one of the most iconic and well-known places in gaming, and is where the entire Resident Evil franchise started. So today we're going to explore it and see what secrets it may hold. Because the lab, aqua ring, dormitory, and other locations are all technically part of the mansion estate, I will be including all areas of the mansion for this video. From classical art to glitching plants, here are 50 facts about the Spencer Mansion. The lab under the mansion has been in use as far back as the 1960s, where a lot of secret research was being conducted by Umbrella. While the public didn't really know about it, the government was well aware of the lab, and it actually was an official vaccine development site for the Ebola virus. Unofficially, this was the site of viral weaponry research, going against several laws and treaties such as bioweapon conventions and human testing. This implies that everyone working at Umbrella was very aware of the fact that they were performing illegal activities. The outbreak happened on May 11th, while two separate tyrants were in the middle of surgery. The Epsilon strain of the T-Virus leaked and became an airborne pathogen, infecting everyone in the mansion and facilities. Only a few people knew what really happened, including Wesker, who cut off all outside phone communication to prevent leaks. In the dormitory, you can find a suicide note dated June 22nd, which means that somehow these two men were able to survive for more than a month after the infection began. In the dining room in the original game, there is a portrait of a Spanish cardinal named Cesar Borgia. The game mistakenly refers to him as a woman. In the large art room, there are many artworks, including a painting called Proserpine by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. After the lab exploded, it caused a large forest fire that engulfed over 750 acres of land. The Raccoon City Fire Department was unable to stop it alone, and they had to call in the National Guard to help them put it out. There was a researcher at Umbrella Chicago branch who was transferred to Arclay and was going to take over William Birkin's research. This researcher was named John Clemens. While he was a brilliant scientist, he was also a good person and couldn't handle all the illegal activities going on. During this time, he fell in love with another researcher named Ada Wong. Not knowing that Ada was a spy and using him for information, he spent his final moments writing a goodbye letter to her before becoming a zombie. It's also worth noting that Ada never gets to read this letter and only knows about John's death because Annette tells her during the events of Raccoon City. It's widely believed that the zombie in the researcher's private room is John, but there's no official confirmation of this. There were a lot of victims in the mansion, not counting STARS members, equaling roughly 200 people or so. These included civilians, umbrella employees, researchers, guards, and maintenance staff, as well as test subjects. The first known civilian, a 20-year-old woman, is mentioned in the file Scrapbook, which has news clippings of various deaths in the Arkley area, most of which are mistakenly believed to be animal attacks. The first death is dated May 27, 1998. In the greenhouse in the original, there is a strange glitch that allows you to get past the plant without using the herbicide. To do this, simply aim, spin around once, stop aiming, and walk forward. The plant will knock you towards the key, allowing you to grab it. In the graveyard, the two zombies wandering around are unique in the fact that they are mostly there for ambiance. They will not spawn at all in easy or very easy difficulty, and on top of this, they will not become crimson heads when killed. In fact, once the player has acquired all four death masks, they just disappear. The painting in the alcove where Kenneth is eaten is called Neuschwanstein Castle, and is actually present in four Resident Evil games. It's moved to the bar in the remake, in the director's office in Resident Evil Zero, and the island antechamber in Resident Evil 4. In the novelization of the first game, the room with the puzzles is explained to have crows sitting on an electrified railing, but the current is off. If the player does the puzzle incorrectly, the current comes back on, shocking the birds, who then become angry and attack. In Code Veronica, there is almost an exact duplicate of the room with the statue of the woman drawing water. The only difference is that the statue itself can be moved instead of pushing a climbable object. The overall architectural style of the facade of the mansion is a combination of what appears to be Regency and Second Empire, as seen by comparison here. Of course, this is a video game, so they could make it up however they want. 
You can actually defeat Lisa Trevor with weapons, causing her to fall and lose her grip if you deal enough damage. You will still have to move the stones to open the gate though. When fighting Lisa Trevor, if she's positioned just right, you can dodge her attacks and get her to knock the stones off the platform for you. In the remake, if you enter Mole, the original game's password, you'll hear the sound Tofu makes in Resident Evil 2. In the mural room, one of the paintings in there is The Sacrifice of Isaac by Caravaggio, painted in 1603, depicting a moment where a man is about to sacrifice his young son in the name of God, but is stopped by an angel who ushers him to sacrifice a ram instead. While it's the first mansion in the series, it's actually a copy. The mansion in Arkley is based on the Spencer estate, which is where Spencer lived and grew up, the same place where he later died in Resident Evil 5. In the entirety of the mansion and the game's design, there is only one deleted enemy, simply called Sea Snake, and this is the only concept art of what it could have been. The enemy may have also been recycled for the Gravedigger in Resident Evil 3, or the Gulp Worm in Code Veronica. Also deleted were some weapon and ammo related items, including a laser gun, flamethrower fuel, and bullets called Dum Dum Rounds for the Cult Python. Dum Dum is an informal term for bullets that expand on impact to cause extra damage. Apparently, it would do less damage to certain enemies, but would do extra damage to bosses. There are also some interesting key items that didn't make it into the final release, including wood, likely a puzzle related key item, a building key, and a pickaxe, which is theorized to allow the player to pry open a welded door to get to the heliport, skipping the lab entirely. The mansion appears as a playable area in Beautiful Joe Double Trouble for the DS. In Marvel vs. Capcom 3, the mansion also makes an appearance in Hulk's ending, along with Chris and Nemesis. In Puzzle Fighter Mobile, the mansion appears as a stage alongside several Resident Evil characters. In Umbrella Corps, the mansion was added as free DLC, combining aesthetics from the original and the remake. George Trevor constructed and designed the mansion under the company name Trevor and Chamberlain. The business actually continued well after his death and was even responsible for refurbishing the Baker family's main house. In the world of Resident Evil, the mansion designs are famous and popular, constantly being copied by other firms trying to do business with wealthy aristocrats. Among these are people like the Ashfords, who had the mansion at the Antarctic base constructed as well as areas of the Queen Zenobia. In Umbrella Chronicles, the mansion is almost fully destructible, allowing you to shoot almost anything. All doors also seem to be unlocked, allowing for a unique path through the mansion. The lighter that Chris starts with is his own, but the one that Jill picks up actually belongs to George Trevor, the designer of the mansion. If examined, it says, words are carved on it, don't play with fire, love Jessica. In Umbrella Chronicles, during Rebecca's side mission, her and Richard jump down the hole in the guardhouse where the tentacle normally attacks you. When they drop down, they end up in the room where you fight the Black Tiger spider boss. This is seen again when Chris and Jill climb up through the same hole. Also in Umbrella Chronicles, the infamous waterfall that is apparently too painful to pass through is no issue for Chris and Jill as they just walk right through it. Exclusive to Sega Saturn is the Tick Enemy, which replaces the hunters in the mines. Also exclusive to the Saturn port are death scenes with more violence, specifically the death at the hands of Plant 42, which will cut your character in half. In the remake, if you make it all the way to the dormitory without pushing the statue over in the dining room, it will automatically be broken on the floor when you come back. In the DS version, a previously unused file was re-added to the rebirth mode. This is a short note that gives a hint about finding the first Doom book. The four death masks that you have to collect are based on what used to be a common custom where a plaster cast was made of a recently deceased person, mainly for sculptors and painters to be able to recreate the likeness of someone. And fun fact, if this process is done on a living person, the technical term for that is life mask. In the arranged mode for the director's cut version, the moon crest is broken into two pieces, one being in the attic and the other being in the researcher's room with the fish tank. In the remake, the cover of the Moonlight Sonata book actually says Moonlight Sonate. The hissing sound that Yawn makes was reused in Dino Crisis for the sound of the Velociraptors.
When transporting the fuel supply capsule, certain events have a chance of causing it to explode. Firing a weapon is a 25% chance. Being grabbed by an enemy is a 20% chance unless it's a zombie, which then it's 30%. And running with the fuel depends on the difficulty. On easy, it will explode somewhere between 3 and 6 seconds. On normal, it's between 3 and 4 seconds. And on hard, it's 3 seconds. The fuel canteen can be used twice before needing to be refilled, and each tank of kerosene will refill it five times. There are a total of five tanks in the whole game which equals a total of 50 zombies you are able to burn. The aqua ring would not be able to hold great white sharks in real life. In fact, no aquarium has ever been able to successfully hold them due to them needing to swim in order to breathe as well as constant injuries sustained from hitting the glass of the tanks. Before Resident Evil 2, there was a proposed sequel called Biohazard Dash that would have taken place in the mansion once again, except this time it would have been very damaged and overrun by spiders and reptiles. It would have also taken place in 2001. Not counting the extra areas, the mansion itself has a total of 28 rooms. The real-life equivalent to Raccoon City is Springfield, Missouri, making the Ozarks the real-life equivalent to the Arklay Mountains where the mansion is located. The total square footage of the mansion is roughly 10,125 square feet. Using real area estimates of about $173 per square foot, the Spencer Mansion would be worth about $1.75 million. And that is it for this video. If you learned something new, then please hit that like button, and if you aren't subscribed, now is a great time to save your game. Also, be sure to check out my other facts videos just like this one. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.